Hi sewing friends, welcome to my sewing room. My name is Beth and if you're new, welcome. Today I'm finishing up a quilt. I've worked on the tumbler block. I'll have the links below. I have the tumbler block link. I have links on how I quilted it because I can't show you really close up. This white thread really didn't show up very well on the fabric and so it's hard to show you what it looks like, but I have another video with that loop-de-loop, -loop, just a really easy pattern. I put some binding on the quilt and I added a label. Looking for the label, here it is. So that'll be at the end of the video, but I'm gonna finish this up and tomorrow I'm going to put it in the mail and it'll get to that new mom real quick. Let's get started. I finished a quilt top in a previous video and I will leave the link below, a tumbler quilt using some large six inch tall tumblers so this quilt went together super quick. And then I laid it on top of a piece of batting that's just a little bit bigger than my quilt top, one to two inches bigger. I kind of guesstimate as I am cutting the batting. I just want enough so that if that quilt top shifts a little bit, I have enough and I it's not quite as tedious uh, as you put the quilt top together and line everything up if you have a little extra batting on the edges. So I started in the middle and I just moved out and smoothed that quilt top on top of the batting after spraying just a really light spray of that 505 adhesive spray. In the front, I flipped the quilt over and I did the same thing with the backing fabric. I started on the side of the quilt and what I did is I did that loop-de-loop -loop pattern all the way through the tumblers, just one row at a time. And I will leave a link to that loop-de-loop -loop pattern. It's just an all-over quilt pattern. And the way I kept track of where I was is I just started at one end of the quilt and worked across. I did start towards the middle and then I moved out to the side. I'm going to trim off the batting and the backing just using that quilt edge as my guide. In my sewing room, I have a drawer, a little plastic drawer that has leftover binding strips and sometimes they're binding strips that I've cut and have decided they weren't quite right. And this uh, group of binding strips, I think was a hand-me-down, but I stuck it in that two and a half inch wide drawer of strips and it was just enough to get around this quilt and it's not the perfect color, but I wanted something light. I thought about adding pink or one of those darker colors, but I this really was the perfect binding to add to this little baby quilt.
pressing my binding in half. I'll be adding it to the back of my quilt. I'm going to leave a tail about eight to 10 inches and I'm going to sew this right along the edge of the back of the quilt. I stopped before I got to the end and I pivoted and sewed off to the corner of the quilt. So I stopped about a quarter to a half an inch away and then I folded the binding up and down and then I'll start sewing right at the top of that fold and I'll do the same thing all the way around. Before I um, finished sewing the last bit of that binding I stopped, I left another tail and I measured, since my binding is two and a half inches, I need two and a half inches extra all the way around. And look at that, that's all I had left. So this was like the perfect size piece of binding. So my piece is two and a half inch longer. I put right sides together and then I will sew corner to corner and this should be the perfect size for my quilt. After I finished that uh, diagonal seam, I pinned the rest of that binding down, what hadn't not been sewn together, and I'll sew that up. It'll be all finished, and then I will turn it to the front and top stitch all the way around. And I'll le leave a link below. I do have another video about how to add a continuous binding, and uh, you can check that one out as well.
This quilt is almost done, but before I give it away, I'm going to add a label. And here is an older um, printed fabric that had labels. I it, This is a hand-me-down I did not purchase. I think it's an older piece of fabric, but I did look on Amazon and I saw that they still sell this kind of thing. It's fabric that's printed and has these places to add your information. So I'm going to use this quilt label and it really goes really well with the back of my fabric, the print on the back. And first thing I did was I cut a little piece of freezer paper just in the area where I'm going to write. It doesn't need to be a large piece, but that stabilizes the fabric so I can put a little message on this label. I made this little uh, test piece a while back. I used some different pens. I wrote down what pen it was and I washed it and I dried it to see if it would bleed or not. So here is a Pentel fabric gel roller and I see that I had used a Micron and an Identa pen. There's different pens to use but this is the one I'll be using today and since I've tested it I know that it will not be bleeding. So I just put a little bit of information on my label here and then I'll be attaching it to the back of my quilt. After removing that freezer paper, I will press down the edges and I'll hand sew this on the back of this baby quilt and then it'll be all ready to go. This was a fun and easy quilt to make. I love these colors. Really pretty quilt. Thanks for joining me today and I'll see you next time.